So our third stop in the Microsoft 365 maintenance process is the Office 365 Security and Compliance Portal. This is where we manage the access and threats into our data. It's where we govern our data. So this is where I check my backups in Microsoft 365. I have another video on that, what backups really mean, the retention policies. But this is where I'm checking our threats against our data, and it's a pretty significant set of subportals. but I am using a dashboard to make it a lot simpler, and I'm going to go through that with you right now. So I'm back in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, and I'm going to scroll down to Security and Compliance, and here we are. Now, there are 14 subportals inside of Security and Compliance. We don't need to go through all of those but what I've done is I pulled the individual widgets that's what these things are here out of the individual portals the ones I care about when I'm maintaining Microsoft 365 I pulled those up into the main dashboard I would suggest you do that as well I'm gonna go over the ones we check as part of our Microsoft 365 maintenance process the first thing we want to do is check again our backups in Microsoft 365 like that means our retention policies. So in Microsoft 365, you have this really nice feature where instead of maintaining old style traditional backups, we can tell Microsoft 365 either hold on or delete this data. So for example, we have a legal folder and in that legal folder, we have a forever retention policy. So even if that folder were to get deleted accidentally, intentionally, whatever, there's another holding area where we could go ahead and pull those files from. Another example would be a policy in our system that says we don't let files accumulate forever and create a bunch of noise in our system. For general data, emails, files, we have a seven year retention policy. It's held for seven years and it's protected against deletion, purging, accidental or intentional, but at the end of seven years, it's deleted. It's just noise in the system. That is where I check our retention policies and our deletion policies. Now, our retention policies are showing, this is a number I'm familiar with here, there are 34 accounts that are protected with that. Great, that's what I'm used to seeing. Here's one I would make a ticket on. I mean, the last time I saw this, even yesterday, it was at 75%. Why did it drop down to 18%? I have no idea. So I've got to look at that. That would definitely make a ticket off of. And I can tell you that deletion policy thing, it, it varies. If you knew what retention policies were and you actually set those and they are super important for your organization, especially if your organization has compliance or strong security needs, you got to keep an eye on this. And the deletion policies are really important too because again, everybody gets frustrated with how much stuff accumulates inside of, inside of their file server. So a deletion policy fixes that. How important are those financial analysis spreadsheets from seven years ago? probably not that important, or the, the marketing spreadsheets, things like that. So we have to keep an eye on those two things. Online archive mailbox, 17 is the right number for us. There are 17 mailboxes that have an online archive policy. We don't let mailboxes just accumulate with 20 years of mail to make those mailboxes very unwieldy and hard to deal with and hard to search on. After a year, it gets moved into an online archive. And then from there, if somebody really needs to do a deep search, they can move over to the archive mailbox for their system. They can move to the online mailbox in their account and they can do their searches there. Lastly, I'm looking to make sure that our automated protection policies for documents and emails are firing. And so E5, you have Azure Information Protection where you can establish automated processes. So for example, let's say somebody has an important legal document and they store it in the wrong place. Well, that has a seven year retention policy. Well, that's not good. So we have the system set up that if a file has the word contract, agreement, signed, stuff like that, that it will put a forever retention policy on that email or document. So then it's saved. We can make sure we can access it in case somebody accidentally puts it in the wrong place where it has a seven year retention policy. But what I'm looking for here is that those automated policies are firing and I feel good that they are. Now I want to look down at the threats to the data. So here we've got some general data governance, protection of the individual files. Now we're going to move on to the threats. Once somebody is inside the system, what's going on with our data? So here I'm looking at the top targeted users, there's a couple service counts, those are generally always at the top. Nothing too concerning that I haven't seen time and time before. Now I'm looking beyond this to Office 365 Advanced Threat Protection. Office 365 Advanced Threat Protection is included in E5, and this is where it is looking at attachments that come in emails. Imagine an attachment that passes through the spam filter, passes through the virus filter. Before it hits the user's mailbox, Office 365 Advanced Threat Protection does one last thing. It detonates that email attachment and makes sure it 
it puts in a little virtual container make sure it's not doing something strange so I want to see what's going on here you know is it picking up files that are doing that also links links inside of emails that are malicious is it picking up on those and I can see here if those systems are firing and we've got some nothing too crazy here nothing I'm super concerned about I see it's acting and it's doing its job great and then threat protections this is the malware and phishing email that is coming through our system that the system is catching so I see here um, pretty good I mean we've had some days where the threats were a little higher but nothing I'm too concerned about here but it's nice to know it's working and then over here I'm looking at the Times Office 365 advanced threat protection yanked files that it detonated and it didn't like inside of those emails Again, I'm looking to make sure that it's firing. Auto forward messages, that's a huge no-no. And I've had that happen before where somebody had an auto forwarded message in the company and it shows up as a big one right here. Like, whoa, that's a big one. Here, we want to make sure that stays zero. If somebody is inside a mailbox, has gotten access to your mailbox and they just secretly set an auto forward, they can do some things that could hurt your company. So I watch that one closely and then threat management alert trends. So we're just looking at the overall threats that are coming into our company here. I'm looking for spikes and just trends that are concerning. Here I'm not really seeing anything I'm that concerned about. Non-delivery report, if this was pegging and spiking, then somebody's inside of our system using our mailbox accounts to send a bunch of junk. That would be good to know. So we have a little bit of an issue here, not too concerned about it, but if this kept going up or trending, then I would I would create a ticket based on that. And then lastly, we come to data loss policy matches. We have one here at Zerillion, which is to say an email can't come from inside our company to go outside of our company and have a password in it. So it looks for the word password for an email that's going outside of the company. It happens all the time. People accidentally put in a password. They just you know, were in a rush. They weren't thinking, and they go ahead and type in the word password, and then it gets bounced back to them. I get a notification and I can see the system is firing. But the important thing is it's working. And again, it drives people nuts. In your company, you may have certain keywords that really would be a concern if they weren't at least reviewed. That's what data loss protection policies are for. That's good data governance for your company. So here in the Microsoft 365 Security and Compliance Portal, once somebody has passed Azure Active Directory and they're in the system and we have pretty good feeling that they really are who they are and they're the good people that are supposed to be in our company. What's happening with that data once they're in? How is it protected? What are the threats against that data? And that's what we're here to look at. And then of course from there, anything that's concerning, make tickets. Don't try to remediate it right now. Just put in your general ticket queue and then move on. But this is how we have the visibility of the control we have, the protection we have, and the security threats against our data. If you want to talk to us about putting Microsoft 365 inside of your company, let's talk. We're a six-time Microsoft Gold Tier 1 Cloud Solution Provider. We sell and service Microsoft Cloud subscriptions, and there's a little note there that we only service clients that we are the subscription reseller. We are a much better experience than an enterprise agreement or working with Microsoft Direct. If you're in an enterprise agreement, imagine this. You're a company with 250 employees and you have an enterprise agreement and you are at the very bottom rung with Microsoft. What do you think that experience is going to be like? And also you have to prepay on an annual basis for all your consumption. With a cloud solution provider model like us, you don't pay any extra and it's monthly. Add subscriptions, remove subscriptions, and it's a much better experience. Also, if you're working with Microsoft Direct, you're going to have a much better experience working with us as well. We're going to be able to guide you a lot better than just calling into the first level support with Microsoft. We also have a premier direct technical support relationship that is even higher and we spend substantially on than the general partner support and that's because we are a tier one cloud solution provider. Lastly, if you want us to get you set up and you want to take over the management, fantastic. But also, if you want us to do all of the management and supporting your users with an unlimited help desk, unlimited system remediation, end user training, monthly IT management calls, and virtual CIO planning, which is what I do, you can talk to us about that too. That's our confident cloud advantage. So finally, remember this. Microsoft 365 is the most advanced system that Microsoft has ever made, but it does require maintenance. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.